The last subject this week is linear time invariant systems, in short LTI systems, with white sense stationary random input. Um, here you see a system where the input is, it could be either a discrete time or continuous time signal in general. And the, the output it produces is just a, a function, which we call a transfer function applied to the input, okay? So we, we can uh, describe systems with transfer functions. Now, uh, in general, and well, I'm going to uh, be very brief on this because we do not really have the time. Um, if, if you have taken a signals and systems course, this should be familiar to you. We call the system linear if the superposition principle holds, okay? Um, if x1 is applied, the output is g of x1. x2 is applied, the output is uh, g of x2, okay? Then if you combine them as a linear transformation, a times x1 plus b times x2, then the output should be a times the output of x1 plus b times the output of x2, okay? This is, in general, what defines linearity in the context of systems. And uh, also we call the system time invariant or in, in case of discrete time systems, sometimes you call them shift invariant. Um, if for all values of the time shift tau, the output of the signal when the signal is shifted by an amount of tau is exactly the same to the shifted version of the output when x of t is applied. Okay, let me repeat that. Let's say you apply x of t, and let's say from the system as an output, you get y of t, okay? You know this relationship. If you shift the input in time, let's say x t plus tau, okay? If you shift the input, you do nothing else, okay? You don't change the function. You don't add anything. You don't multiply by a by anything. If you apply the shifted version of the input, then if you get the exactly, uh, the, the shifted version of the output by the exactly same amount, uh, we call this system time invariant. Now, if a system has both these properties, linear and time invariant, we call such systems linear time invariant, in short, LTI systems. Okay, so LTI systems are probably the easiest class of systems that we can analyze uh, because um, you see, we can decompose any signal, continuous time or discrete time, and it doesn't really have to be random or deterministic. We can express them um, in discrete time as a, a sequence of the sum of weighted uh, impulses and in continuous time um, an integral uh, of weighted Dirac functions, okay? This is the essential uh, observation we, are, we base our systems analysis on. And therefore, for an LTI system with impulse response, H of T, we can do the following derivation now. What's an impulse response? Impulse response is for a continuous time system, you apply an impulse here. Okay, let's say this is the transfer function and the output is h of t. For a discrete time system, if you apply an impulse, okay, again, you obtain what we call the impulse response, okay? So impulse response, in short, is the output of the system when the input is an impulse. Now, since we have this um, uh, uh, decompositions of every signal, Okay, we can write them as, well, g of t, well, well, g, function g applied to the input x of t, and x of t can be written as the integral of a weighted uh, Dirac. And then, and uh, since x of u here are just weights, they are just fixed numbers for each possible value of u, and I, I can um, use the linearity of the system Right, because if, if you apply a linear combination of uh, a number of uh, signals, you at the output, you will see the same linear combination of outputs. So I can just apply the transfer function 
just to these impulses because these are only weights, just numbers, okay? And therefore, what this is, is um, the impulse response shifted by t minus u. Well, here I'm also using time invariance because, well, I'm just applying not only impulse, but a shifted impulse, okay? And, but uh, what I should have is, uh, is going to be the shifted version of the impulse response. And this integral, well, at x of t, uh, as you see, this is uh, just this decomposition. And at the end, what I have is the integral from minus infinity to infinity, x of u times h of t minus u, where h is the impulse response. And in short, as you see, this is what we call the convolution integral. Okay, if you're not familiar with this, um, this is, well, we have uh, also seen this in, in the discussion of uh, the distribution of some of independent random variables. And this is the notation we use for convolution, x of t convolved with the impulse response. This is a very, very basic result, and you can uh, do a similar, in fact, an easier derivation for discrete time. Essentially, the output of uh, a, an LTI system is equal to the input convolved with the impulse response of this system. So that means the impulse response by itself represents, it's sufficient to represent uh, any LTI system. Now using this, we are going to apply uh, a random process to such an LTI system, okay? And of course, again, here we are, we are going to assume the random process X of T is white sense stationary, okay? And basically, again, this is the convolution. You can write this either as X of U times H of T minus U DU or X of T minus U times H U DU. In that sense, convolution is, um, uh, it, it, it has the, uh, this property. You can exchange X and H uh, here, okay, in this integral. So if you take the expectation, well, well, y of t can be expressed in this way, but we are also interested in the statistics of y of t, the mean value, the autocorrelation, etc. cetera. Um, the expected value, well, just uh, take the expectation of um, this uh, or, or this one, uh, okay, this is by definition y of t. And again, I'm going to use the linearity of expectation to push it inside um, the integral. And H of U is not random. It's just the impulse response of the system. The system itself is not random. So it can stay out of the expectation. And this is the expected value of X. Well, it is at T minus U, but it doesn't matter because X is white and stationary. So the mean doesn't depend on time. Therefore, it's just mu multiplied by the integral of h of u, the integral of the impulse response. But remember, the impulse response, if you take its um, Fourier transform, okay, the Fourier transform of the impulse response, that's the impulse response in the frequency domain. Now, that is essentially the Fourier transform of h of t. Therefore, this integral is, as you see, this integral evaluated at f equals zero, right? So essentially the expected value of y of t is equal to the mean of x multiplied by the Fourier transform of the impulse response evaluated at zero frequency.